March Madness has passed, but the 2024 WNBA draft is quickly approaching. Though a handful of projected first round picks have decided to return to school, this year's class is one of the most highly anticipated classes in recent memory. My name is Hunter Cruz, a credentialed WNBA draft analyst for the next and Lost Women's Basketball. Today's mock draft consists of 75% my personal scouting evaluations and what I expect to happen. So let's kick it off with the Indiana Fever at number one. The Indiana Fever select Caitlin Clark, guard out of Iowa. Clark is the prize of this year's draft. She can do almost anything you want. She's an elite passer. She's an elite pull-up shooter. She can run off screens. She does almost anything you want from the guard position. And the most impressive gets in passing windows for her teammates to excel. That's something she's done really well at Iowa. You see the double-digit assist games. It's not just her scoring. There's so much more to her game. At two, the LA Sparks select Cameron Brink, power forward slash center out of Stanford. Ever since Becker's announced that she'd be returning next season to UConn, Brink has been the obvious pick here at number two. She's an elite defensive prospect, the best defensive prospect in this year's draft. She's a good rim protector, she can defend in space. She has a growing offensive game as well as a shooter. And as a team like LA, you just need talent. They're a young team, they're rebuilding. And Brink is a good way to start this rebuild. At three, the Chicago Sky select Rakia Jackson, power forward out of Tennessee. This is where the draft really starts, and this is what's going to create a domino effect. If Chicago decides to go with Cardoso, Jackson's off the board at four. If Chicago goes with Jackson at three, it opens up what, what is LA going to do at four? Are they going to go with Cardoso? Are they going to go with Sheldon, Edwards, Reese? So it opens up so much um, uncertainty with whatever Chicago does here at three. But Rakia Jackson, elite scoring prospect, one of the best scoring prospects in recent memory. She can get a bucket anywhere. Uh, the defense is a concern, her motor is a concern, but there's a lot of upside here with Jackson at three. At four, the LA Sparks are back on the board and they select Camila Cardoso, center out of South Carolina. Cardoso is an elite rim protector. She's six foot seven. She's also a really good mover for her size as well. The concerns, she's also just not a great finisher right now. And her technique as well, like screening, stuff like that can also improve. So for LA here, best player available and i think cardoso makes a lot of sense here you're in a rebuild they don't really have to go for need right now so getting brink and cardoso provides them with some upside long term as well as being able to really build a defensive infrastructure here in la at five the dallas wings select jc sheldon shooting guard out of ohio state if this is how the draft falls Dallas could certainly go with Aaliyah Edwards or Angel Reese here, but as I mentioned in Mock Draft 1.0, Dallas just does not need more frontcourt players, so going with J.C. Sheldon would be an interesting fit and I like it a lot. Dallas plays up-tempo, J.C. Sheldon is the fastest player in this year's draft, she is a blur downhill, she lives at the rim, she can also shoot, and her combination of being just a good shooter, improving defense, and her rim pressure ability really fits with Dallas playing alongside Rike Gumbawale, Satu Sabali, uh, Tier McCowan. It's just a great fit here. So yeah, JC Sheldon at number five. At six, the Washington Mystics select Aaliyah Edwards, power forward slash center out of UConn. Having Edwards alongside Shakira Austin in the front court is a terrorizing defensive duo. And with that duo as well, both of them aren't shooters right now, but they're both very good interior spacers. They are good movers off ball. They can cut, they can fill open space. And with Mike Tebow's system, with what they've been doing for years now, this really fits with what Washington does, having Aaliyah Edwards. She's just a scheme fit as well, and also an upside fit for them. If she can shoot long-term, this is an enticing duo that could potentially be a playoff caliber front court. At seven, the Minnesota Lynx select Angel Reese, center out of LSU. Some may consider Reese a power forward, but for me, she's just a center right now. She can't shoot in the mid range. She doesn't have a three point shot. And having Reese alongside Diamond Miller and Nafisa Collier, and alongside what they have in terms of veterans, um, they don't really have a specific need. So getting Reese as an upside play, she's an elite rebounder. She's super aggressive, high motor. She competes on both ends of the floor. She runs the floor hard. She's a great positional passer as well. All of the upsides there, if she can just unlock more as a scorer, as a shooter, and with her finishing ability. And the efficiency, like I said there, with the finishing, her efficiency is a concern, but I think having her in this Minnesota system, their developmental system, will really benefit Reese long-term. At eight, the Chicago Sky select Nadia Poch, 
power forward out of Australia. With Chicago, they're entering their first year of a rebuild, new head coach, new general manager. They do not have a lot of draft assets moving forward. So drafting Poich as a draft and stash player almost functions as a first round pick next year because they don't have their own pick. And with Poach, there's a lot of upside there. She's a six foot three forward. She's a good mover, an elite defender. On the offensive end, though, there's a lot of untapped potential there. She's very raw. Her finishing's inconsistent. The shooting mechanics are hit or miss. So if you can really bring all of it together, this is a really quality contributor at the WNBA level. And I like this pick for Chicago at number eight. At nine, the Dallas Wings select Leila Lecon, combo guard out of France. For Dallas here, they just don't have the roster spots to take two rookies and then have them on their roster next season. So with Lacan, even though she won't be coming over this season, she has elite upside. She can operate at a pick and roll. She's 5'11 as well. She's crafty. She's an okay shooter. She's not a broken shooter. She's needs to improve there, but she's only 19 years old. She can defend multiple positions. And she's also one of the best players in the French League, the French First Division, as a 19-year-old. So Lacan makes a lot of sense for Dallas here at 9. 10, the Connecticut Sun select Alyssa Peely. Power forward? What position does she play? I don't totally know. She's probably a power forward, but so for Peely, just a quick synopsis on her game. She's six foot. She can shoot threes. She's an elite post scorer. The defense is a massive question mark. So for Connecticut, you have the benefit of having some elite defenders in the front court. You have Alyssa Thomas, who's one of the most versatile defenders in the league. You also have Bree, Bree Jones on the back end at center. So you could potentially make it work with Peely as the four, have Alyssa Thomas as well out there. And Connecticut just has a lot of size in general at the guard spot. So with Peely, they have the defensive infrastructure there to make it work and hopefully get her to improve on the defensive end. So I like the spot here for Peely at number 10. At 11, the New York Liberty select Charisma Osborne, combo guard out of UCLA. For New York, they don't have any immediate needs. They're a contending team, but they're getting a lot with Osborne here as a defensive player. She really competes on defense, she's good off the ball, she can defend at the point of attack a little bit. On offense, she's a really quick mover with the ball, she makes quick decisions. Um, so there's just a lot of value in having a player like that on your team. There are some questions about having a 5'8 player that's not a point guard, and is also not really tall enough to be a true shooting guard. So there's some stuff, some questions there, and that's why she's still on the board at 11. But I think this is overall a solid fit with New York system. At 12, to close out the first round, the Atlanta Dreams select Nika Mule, point guard out of UConn. Mule really fits what Tanisha Wright likes in her guards. She really competes on defense. She's a good passer. And with all of that combined with what her impact is for UConn as this glue, she connects everything. She, her impact doesn't really show up on the stat sheet, but Mule is just so solid at a lot of things. Having that in Atlanta could really be helpful for this team moving forward. Open the second round, the Chicago Sky select Mackenzie Forbes, shooting guard out of USC. Forbes is a major riser throughout this process. She can really score the basketball. At 14, the Seattle Storm select Celeste Taylor, shooting guard out of Ohio State. Taylor, elite defensive prospect. The offense is a really big question. Can she shoot? Can she finish? That's why she's on the board at 14. At 15, the Indiana Fever select Elizabeth Kidley, center out of Virginia Tech. Kidley will miss her entire rookie season with a torn ACL, but having her in Indiana as a draft and stash kind of pick makes sense. At 16, the Las Vegas Aces select Carla Leite, point guard out of France. She's only 19 years old, can really operate at a pick and roll, and Vegas could use more young assets on their team besides their stars. At 17, the New York Liberty select Marquisha Davis, shooting guard out of Mississippi. Davis is an elite athlete, really defends, and the shooting is a question as well with her, similar to Taylor, but solid pick here at 17. At 18, the Las Vegas Aces select Jalen Sherrod, point guard out of Colorado. Sherrod is quick, quick and just quick, defends. At 19, the Connecticut Sun select Lilani Correa, small forward out of Florida. Correa is just this 3 and D type of player and really fits what Connecticut likes in their prospects. At 20, the Atlanta Dream select Tiana, Tiana Jackson, center out of Kansas. Atlanta needs more size on their bench. They have Tina Charles, but Charles is only 6'4". They could use some more 6'5 plus players. At 21, the Washington Mystics select Jazz Shelley, point guard out of Nebraska. Just a very steady guard, really passes, can shoot a little bit. At 22, the Connecticut Sun select Deisha Fair, point guard out of Syracuse. Fair is a bucket. At 23, the New York Liberty select Isabel Borlace, 
small forward out of Australia. Borlase is one of the most productive teenagers in the world in Australia's WNBL, so a really solid draft and stash pick here at 23. At 24 to round out the second round, the Las Vegas Aces select Hannah Jump, small forward out of Stanford, elite shooter, there's just not much else there, but with Vegas, you can never have enough shooting. And finally, here's a look at my third round picks. I'm not going to go pick by pick here, but there's just a lot of talented players on the board still, but it's just really tough for third rounders to make it on their first contract, especially right after getting drafted in training camp. There's just such limited roster spots, but each of these players, there's some intrigue here, and whether that's being a good international player or eventually making a roster down the line. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'm on the road to 1,000 subscribers. That's the goal right now. And just a lot of dubbing big content coming your way. More scouting content, more draft content, all of that kind of stuff. So if that's your thing, hit the subscribe button. And yeah, I'll see y'all next time.